explain what it is, Your Grace. Please, just let me show it to you. Every secret may be found within... Ah, uh, here you are. I was wondering where you had run off to in such a hurry. Please excuse us, Your Grace. It was never our intention to disturb you like this. You see, Avisa's mental state has been rather unstable ever since she arrived at the fortress. She rambles often, has hallucinations. It may be best to dismiss her babbling as random gibberish. I don't recall hearing a knock or giving permission for you to come in. Oh, my apologies. I merely did not wish for your grace to be alarmed. Had I not been so focused on recovering her, I would have followed all the rules of etiquette to the letter. So please forgive my discourtesy. Please, there's no need to be upset. It's only natural to want to side with the poor sick girl, but I know his grace to be a reasonable man. Well then, what if the reasonable man wants to hear the lunatic out? That would be perfectly fine with me. Oh, and just so you know, we've also found the missing Mr. Fasal. I had no idea why he was so upset about losing his hat, really. Thankfully, he has already returned to his senses. We've brought him back to our place, so there's no need to worry. I'm sorry, Your Grace. I don't have anything more to say. This is what you're afraid of, correct? You can tell me everything. I'll do all I can for you. I... I... I've never seen that thing in my life. Your Grace, I don't think there's anything else she would like to say. Pressuring her will not get you anywhere. Mm. It's all right, Elise. As long as you tell me what it is that you're terrified of, no matter what it is, it will no longer be able to hurt you. I swear this on my name and honor as the Duke. Your Grace! <sighs> Forget it. I'll keep my mouth shut. I've already said everything I could say about the matter. I'm sorry, Your Grace, but I really don't have anything more to say. Please, don't press me further. But why? In that case, Avis and I will be off. Once again, please accept my apologies for disturbing your peaceful evening, Your Grace. Miss Avis, please show me your head. That is an order. There's nothing there. Your Grace, I know you have long tired of my words, but please believe me when I say you've merely let your worries get to your head. The society has never caused trouble for you or any of the guards at the fortress. We've spent all of our time working hard and trying to lead better lives. Why are you doing everything in your power to prove our guilt? What's wrong with the current state of affairs? I'll do anything for you, as long as you give me the word. Why are you so intent on getting rid of someone who's been unfalteringly loyal? Your words bore me. You know the consequences if I find you to be lying. Everything that I do, I do for the Fortress of Meripede. But your grace is welcome to visit us any time to confirm the true intent of our activities. All right, Avis. Let's head back. Sooner or later, all will pay the price for their arrogance. Oh, he must have been well prepared for this exact scenario, or he wouldn't have dared to be so openly hostile. All the more reason for us to be patient. 
the entire society are his hostages. His subordinates would definitely react if he were taken into custody. And that's why he dared to bare his fangs right in front of me. And the true secret of the society is neither on the hat nor on the members' heads. Dugier probably knew this from the very beginning, which is why he didn't panic. However, if we were to look at the rules, it would also seem like the head has to be the place where they're keeping all of their secrets. Yeah, none of this makes sense to Paimon either. What are they trying to hide? The hats are definitely being used to hide a secret. But there's nothing wrong with the hats themselves. From the way Dugier acted, he must have known from the beginning that we wouldn't be able to find any evidence. But if there's nothing on her head, why did Avis feel the need to remove her hat? I have an idea, but... Huh? What is it? Tell Paimon about it! You mean, this thing? So, she handed a key piece of evidence over to us without Dugier noticing. That would mean that Avis didn't stay silent out of fear. She stayed silent because she'd already given us what we needed. Let me take a look. I managed to remove this from the hair clip. It's long, slender, and conical. It's hollow on the inside, and looks something like a cross between a nail and a thorn. this. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, wait, some kind of dark liquid is leaking out of the gem. And some of it has been absorbed by this thorny looking thing. You've probably heard before that water is filled with the strongest emotions of humanity. With that in mind, this liquid is probably a highly concentrated solution of fear. Oh, so that's why even touching it will make you remember unpleasant things. Dugier would be able to censure others. I can only imagine how it would feel to have this directly injected into your brain. The moment it hits you would be like being flooded with all the terrors you've ever experienced in your life. Agony, desolation, and an overwhelming sense of despair. No wonder they're all so terrified of it. So, was the hat meant to cover up their wounds? And that might not even be all. Let's go get them right away. We can't let Dugier escape with all of the evidence. Your Grace, we have taken the society members into custody. They all tried to flee just a little while ago, as if they had received some kind of order. We decided to forestall their plan, and were just about to send the word when you unexpectedly arrived. Great work, everyone. You had prepared for something like this all along? I had them stay here to keep an eye on things, so I'm glad that my intuition turned out to be correct. 
Perform a thorough search of the Society's headquarters and bring all the members to me. Understood, Your Grace. Now, let's check on them. As expected, they all have a hollow thorn inserted into a wound on their head. Ooh. Paimon's glad her eyesight isn't so good that she can see it from here. I... Paimon's gonna float away for a bit. They probably left it there as a lasting reminder of Dujier's censure. These people must have had to endure an unimaginable amount of pain. Let's go check out the other areas, too. Look at what I found. This is a surveillance port. With this, Dujier would be able to remotely monitor everything that's happening at the gathering place. So even if Dujier's not there in person, he'll still always have eyes on the members. Indeed. It's easy to become lost and confused when you're given no instructions or any kind of script to follow. And if any action you take may be deemed a mistake, then perhaps it's better to do less, or to not do anything at all. Dujier has already tamed them to his will. Your Grace! Your Grace! What's the matter? We couldn't find any society members in the other areas. It also seems like none of the equipment in those rooms were ever used. All the signs of wear and tear are fake. The lime scale, the layers of dust, they were all deliberately added. We also investigated the members' residences and weren't able to find anything. Their neighbors all say that they haven't returned home for ages. Oh... Is that right? They're gone? That could only mean... Indeed. As long as he allowed society members to mingle with others, even with threats of censure, Dujier knew that he couldn't stop all of his members from speaking out. Meanwhile, this marvelous gathering place will lose all of its value as soon as a whistleblower sounds the alarm. So instead of being his real base, this is just an elaborate performance. The rest areas, the fancy equipment, even the members that we saw, they were merely part of the front and only the most docile and well-trained members were selected as his performers. But then, where can we actually find him? <sighs> Let me think. Dujier must be holding all the rest of his members in another place. And if the overseer of my fortress guard has never alerted me to anything of the sort, he must be in Dujier's pocket. I'm of the same mind. Let's go. You too, follow me.
That's the most likely scenario to me. He's probably already caught wind of Dugier's declaration of war against me, and has fled to seek his protection. Let's keep heading down. There are some abandoned areas in there. Since he needs space, I'd guess Dugier probably converted them into his headquarters. We should be on the right track. Now we just need to find that turncoat. Let's go. We can take this path. You guys take the other. After them! It's Risley! Run! Uh. Uh. Ugh, those blasted guards! Did Dugier send you? Why did you attack that guard? <sighs> Come on! It's time to talk! Can't you see that he's trying to help? I will take your cooperation into consideration when it comes time to hand out sentences. But, but Mr. Dugier, he, he didn't want this guy to expose our true location. We were just about to dispose of him when you caught up to us. So, in other words, your headquarters should be this way. Yes, it's just down this way. You'll make it there once you've seen it pass through a large drainage pipe. Guards, take them away. Let's go. It's about time that we find out what Dugier's really after. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. There's so much space down here. Yeah, these are all former work areas. They've been left abandoned due to a lack of funds. There are usually guards on patrol here. It would seem that all of those guards have been bought as well. Stay sharp. He's got a ton of surprises waiting for us, I'm sure.
let the show begin. Don't get frostbite. Dodge this. Run away now. safe now. Just follow the guards and leave this place. Who knew that there'd be Gardamax here? Dushi ain't really prepared for everything! And that would explain the strange decommission requests I received, as well as account for all the Gardamax that had mysteriously gone missing. Seems like he's prepared for an all-out confrontation with me. Hey, what's this? Seems like some kind of handbook. Let me see. Ah, this should be the Society's real rules book. It lists all the rules that they're expected to follow. Members are not permitted to speak to each other or to leave without formal permission. Five members shall form a group, and the whole group will be punished for any single member's wrongdoings. Anyone who reports a fellow member's misbehavior shall be rewarded with food and water. I see. So it's much as I expected. But that's just cruel and unreasonable. To obtain food and water, prisoners are forced to snitch on others, and in the process cause pain to those around them. To avoid punishment, they learn to stop talking with one another. This leaves the wounds they've already received to fester, however. And so resentment builds until every prisoner has become an island. Finally, isolated and without hope, they accept their fate as Dugier's slaves. Do you remember what happened to Paimon? She rejected all the snacks in the box once she was spooked by that black gem. She's usually all for tasty snacks, but she chose to go against her instincts after a negative experience. Ugh, is that the best example you could come up with? Anyway, Paimon still thinks she made the right decision. and never hurts to be careful. No, your decision was valid. However, it's also valid to interpret that as a decision that you only made under emotional duress. The human heart is like a raft in a vast and empty ocean. We convince ourselves that we're in control, but in truth, a single wave could sweep us off course and send us crashing into the path of a storm. Those who use fear to lead others astray must pay for that crime.
Let's begin. If I'm not mistaken, the space ahead should be the central area of this place. But the door has been locked. Rather than confront Dujier, I think it's more important right now for us to rescue as many society members as possible. You guys should wait here. We'll try to open the door and check out some other spots. Open the door? Would we have to do something to this mechanism here? Ugh, Paimon doesn't get it at all. Forget it, Paimon's just gonna do some trial and error. Get a little chilly. Don't run away now. Freeze. This moment will be frozen in time. Ah.
Oh, it's so high! Uh, we're not gonna have to climb all the way up, are we? Activate the mechanism in front of us first, just like before. Let's see if that changes anything. Hmm. Looks like there's a mechanism that's gotten stuck. It won't turn alongside the others. Uh, is there something we can do? A moment, please. <laughs> These should be the prison cells. Hmm. Lots of empty cells in here. Dugier's probably moved them elsewhere already. Let's still rescue the ones who got left behind, though. Every person counts! be able to get through to her right now not with the stress response in the way i'd also guess there are many others here who are more or less like her let's let the guards take care of them for now and keep pushing forward
seems to be something like a console. This is a surveillance terminal. The information collected by the surveillance ports we found previously will be sent here. I'm sure Dugier really enjoyed sitting here and making his people dance like puppets on strings. Like a console. This is a surveillance terminal. The information collected by the surveillance ports we found previously will be sent here. I'm sure Dugier really enjoyed sitting here and making his people dance like puppets on strings. If you ever see any stickers on my back, do me a favor and take them off. Malazines like to play pranks sometimes. <laughs> the door's open. Huh. Maybe it's his grace. I'll go take a look. I leave this area to you. Make sure to bring everyone out safe. Understood. And please take care as well, Your Grace. We'll return here right away and await your orders. Mm-hmm. Just focus on the tasks you've been given. I already have reliable help over here. Let's go back. We have unfinished business, do we not? That mechanism from the first room. Maybe we'll also need to hold it in place using the same device to open the door that leads to the central area. Don't forget to bring these along. The guards from the Fortress of Meripede have already taken control of this area. You're safe now. This is a surveillance, I'm sure, douchey.
We'll need to hold the mechanism in place? Paimon doesn't think we'll be able to open the door like this. Let's go back!
I must confess to being furious. To think that there are still some of you who find it permissible to spit upon our rules. Remember their names. Fasal and Avis. They've betrayed you, betrayed us. And today you will see with your own eyes what'll happen to those who betray our cause. Go on, Avis. Pierce his skull with the thorn in your hands, and then push in the Aqua Dolores. Of course, you will do it one drop at a time. Let it do its magic again and again, and don't stop until you've pushed all of it in. This all... I'm sorry. It... it's okay. I'll... find a way to endure. Oh, shut your wretched mouths! When did I give you permission to speak? My rules are the paramount law of this place! Only more pain will come to those who dare to disobey! That's enough, Dugier. Your rabid screams have been beyond nauseating. <laughs> Is that... His Grace? Oh, Risley. I knew you would come, but I didn't expect you to be so quick. Must you still refuse to let me be? Did I not spell everything out for you already? What's so blasphemous about sharing a slice of the cake with me when you've already got the entire fortress at your feet? It would seem that you can't see the difference between sharing and looting. And on top of that, Look at your people. Are they not starving as you wolf down your cake? You. Stop acting all high and mighty like some hero of justice! Have you forgotten? Nobody in this blasted fortress is innocent! We are all irredeemable monsters who have destroyed something that others held dear. What's so wrong about punishing those who deserve to be punished? It's what they've always deserved. And please, are you really gonna tell me that you care about their lives and well-being when you just need a supply of labor to keep this place running? Is it that all you need to keep your cushy life? Sadly, you're wrong on both counts. Unlike you, I've never seen them as currency. The fortress is not only a place for confinement, but also a place for rebirth. Just as people are free to give in to the darkness within their hearts, they are also free to seek redemption and a new beginning. Our bodies have limits, but our spirits will always remain free. They may have made mistakes, but they are still human beings with people and things that they cherish. And most importantly, they should always retain the freedom to choose their own path once they've reflected on their past misdeeds. But you... You're destroying their spirits with fear, taking their freedom away so that they'll become slaves who will never again feel or think. And you say that's what they've always deserved? You are nothing compared to them. He... he's really mad. You think me arrogant, Risley. Well, I think you're too young and naive. You understand nothing of this world. Nobody actually sees this fortress as any kind of just a wonderful place. See it for what it is. A dumping ground of pain and misery, irredeemable now and irredeemable forever! No prisoner will listen to you out of gratitude of their hearts. The whip is the only way to make them obey. Had you been just one step slower, I would have already taken control of all the garden mechs in this place. Your vision gives you strength. But how long will it hold against these powerful constructs? <laughs> you talk big, but in the end you know nothing outside of power and control. In that case, let me give you a small taste of what real power looks like. A moment, please. Mm. <laughs> Taste good. 
get a little chilly. I think fear can control everything. Well then, terrify me. Don't high road me! You're just another crook! And it's time you got treated like one! <laughs> 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 Scared to shoot straight? I, I warned you! Unauthorized punishment and torture are prohibited here! As the Duke, you should set an example! Funny how that slipped my mind. Well, from this point on, you can forget about that rule. The rules of the fortress are there to keep the likes of you in check. But if the Duke wants somebody dead, he needs no justification. Understood. <laughs> Sorry for taking so long. Did I keep you waiting? No, not at all. Paimon didn't know you were so considerate. <laughs> if you ask me, I'd say I actually feel very helpless. There's no way that I could truly empathize with the fear that the members felt every day. I could comfort and compensate them all I want, but it might still not be enough to repair the damage that has been done. I have to take responsibility for it, as does the fortress. Yeah, it's the least that we could do. So, do you have a plan for how you're gonna deal with him yet? Oh, Dugier? I've already got an idea. For now, I think I'll do nothing. Huh? Why? I think it's a very fitting punishment for him to have to imagine the sorts of punishments that will soon be coming his way. He'll be left in the dark with regards to both the dates and the details of his punishment. Of course, that's not to say that I'll be letting him off scot-free. It's not often that I actually get the chance to be creative with my punishments. I'm going to talk to the members of the Society. He'll get a chance to experience everything that he's ever inflicted on them. Paimon didn't know you could also be so harsh! Looks like she should watch her tongue when she's around you in the future. Why do you think I'd do that kind of thing to you? You offend me, Paimon. Anyway, jokes aside, thank you so much for all of your help. There's still a lot for me to take care of, so... How about this? I'll treat you to a meal in two days at the Coupon Cafeteria. We should have a better handle on things by then. Uh, no, Paimon's had enough of that place. Don't worry, it won't be the same old welfare meal. I'll make the necessary arrangements. <laughs> 